What's going on everybody? Welcome to another exploration video. Today we find ourselves inside of an old historic mansion, one of which is A, beautiful, and B, has a crazy, crazy history. And when going to these places, first of all, I look to make sure it's beautiful, it's worth documenting, it's worth taking pictures of it, admiring. But the second thing I look at is how is the history? Now this place was built originally in 1905 by a very historic rich man. Um, he ev eventually moved, he died, and the property was sold to Reverend Carl Stevens. This man was a leader of a Christian uh, cult, essentially. It was called the Bible Speaks. It was called the Bible Speaks, and it is described by its charismatic pastor, Carl Stevens, as a Christ-centered, Bible-believing, fundamentalist church. Anyone in the entire world, no matter where they come from, no matter if they don't go to church or they do go to church or whatever denomination they're a part of, once they believe in Jesus Christ, they're already saved. The Bible Speak says it has affiliated ministries in 19 states and 31 foreign countries. On 88 rolling acres, it operates the Stevens School of the Bible with 390 full-time adult students and a Christian day school with 300 students. Live from the international headquarters of the Bible Speaks, in small amounts at first, Betsy began giving money to the church, $1,000 to start, then $10,000. And late in 1984, she and her husband agreed to give the Bible Speaks $1 million in Dayton Hudson common stock. The next spring, Betsy gave the church another gift, $5 million. I have heard directly from God, she wrote Pastor Stevens. I am excited that this money will be used for God's kingdom. Jonas, the husband, later said he hadn't known about the $5 million gift, and in a letter to Pastor Stevens asked that he give Betsy no more financial advice even if she asks for it. Pastor Stevens insists the lawsuit is a cycle of lies and that his fundraising efforts were no more than those of any other church pastor. But at no time did you encourage her to give you money. I have, a, I have an established practice before God that I will never ask anybody for money or encourage it. As a matter of fact, if I hadn't been a pastor who cares for her family, we had to stop having her give money. She wanted to give more money. So the letter that, that she wrote in her own hand in April uh, 1985... With her own mind. With her own mind. <laughs> are her own words? Certainly her own words, as far as I know, completely. The church has not been without controversy and criticism. One group of ex-members calling themselves 12 Incorporated regularly pickets the Bible Speaks. We want to see Jesus Christ glorified, not Carl Stevens. Pat Manchester, one of the 12, testified in court on behalf of the Dovey Dennises that Pastor Stevens was a deceiver and not a truthful man. They've ripped off families, they've taken their incomes, <clears throat> they have uh, divided families, they have uh, done everything that is uh, against Christianity. Other ex-members have complained that the church raised money by getting converts to sell their homes, give the proceeds to the church, and then move to Lenox with the promise of a rent-free campus apartment. Pastor Stevens says he personally never used that technique. But Alan and Dorothy Carlson, who were church members in Maine, say they remember Pastor Stevens' telephone calls. He would get on the phone and just build us up and... The bottom line was, have you sold your house yet? He took all he could from this town. He was known for mind control, stealing people's money, abuse, sexual abuse. He did a lot of terrible things. So he, he eventually was basically ran out of his original town in Maine. And he came here. He founded his community, his cult, here on this property. This is one of many buildings that are on this property. And this one is beautiful. In uh, the 1980s, he was filed for many, many, many lawsuits. That's when a lot of his malpractice was exposed. He eventually fled from where we are today to Baltimore, um, and he passed away in, I believe, 2008. So. 
a lot of the bad things that happened over the time, over the course of history when it comes to this Bible study group, this cult happened in this here building. And I'm gonna be taking you guys around, showing you guys a lot of the beautiful architecture and um, just seeing what else we could find. So if you guys do enjoy, leave a thumbs up and let's go check it out. Here we are at the front entrance have these beautiful iron gates and next to it beautiful spiral staircase with a nice candle lit chandelier probably originally candles but now it's uh, light bulbs you could see the decay here on the ceiling above this place has been abandoned for about nearly 15 years and we're gonna be checking out all of its beauty I mean check out this Beautiful woodwork here on this staircase, on this banister. Stuff like this is not made anymore, so I'm super excited to be inside here. Let's take a look around. If you guys enjoy the video, leave a thumbs up. And let's go. We're also joined by the homie, Urbex and Chill. Hello, everybody. He's here with us. Gotta love all the just different shapes in this building. Fireplace. I think they're using this place last as like a book donation. So there's a lot of books on tables and such. But this was one of the ballrooms of the original mansion. So beautiful. Gotta love this original mirror. Wow. The ceiling here is so amazing. You got the hand painted cloud ceiling. Beautifully done. So, you know, you can imagine how people would come here as followers of this cult of Christianity and be taken away by this place and probably, probably taken back by the amount of people who are actually following this man. Because at its peak, I believe it had about a thousand followers. There was a lot of adult followers. And with that came a lot of youngsters too, you know, their, their kids. And there was a daycare on the facility, so the mind control would come very quick when attending this place. Nice. They even indented the wall here so that when you open the door, it's kind of nice and flush with it. Seriously beautiful. This is my favorite room so far. subtle details like in these in this fruit fruit design got some grapes got some pears got some daisies whole room is filled with them I mean the ceiling is covered seriously can't get over this architecture I really hope this place is saved one day because it's just too beautiful to rot it's so sad how buildings are disrespected now. Buildings of the past, that is. Because to me, these buildings show like human accomplishment. Like we don't even make things of this style anymore. Buildings of this nature were built to last. There's a reason why a hundred some years later, this place is pretty immaculate. I think we're entering a library. Got some more moldings right when we enter. But we have some shelving here. Could also have been an office, or actually it does look like a library. 
you know, some shelves. So obviously with this hole here, you could tell it was a staircase because the wall's missing. But originally, you could see where this hidden door was. They removed it, you know, very early on before it was abandoned, but hidden door is always really, really, really cool. along with the woodwork on this banister. I just noticed how this wall curves and they have, they have doors molded. Look at that. You can't tell probably the curvature of the doors. But seriously, beautiful, beautiful work. a white room with a blue ceiling and a gold uh, fireplace. You have some doves painted on the wall here. Actually, there's quite a lot of um, paint on the walls. It's just really faded. You can just barely make it out. This one's in pretty good condition. This one is... Uh, kind of jammed inside the machine. I don't know, maybe it's supposed to look like that. So beautiful. Hmm, where to go, where to go? We have many options here. I guess first we could admire this, this staircase. Gotta love all the paint chips. You even have more detail up here. here. The residents or followers lived on campus. Got a nice beautiful fireplace. More moldings. Oh, we have a nice walk-in closet. I really like the setup of all this. The followers of this cult loved Reverend Stevens so much. They went state to state. They, they literally crossed state lines and followed him. No matter how many allegations happened, no matter how many people protested this man outside of these doors, they still followed him from state to state. The story of this man's life really is that he started one place, scammed, ripped off a bunch of people, moved to the next, and that kept on happening state after state. And this is just one of the properties in which this man um, committed all these horrible acts. But the building itself is beautiful and the history just attracts us to it. We have a old tub, not a clawfoot tub, but 
an old one. Pretty basic bathroom. Got the wallpaper peeling. We got this draw system built into the house. Always love that old school design. There's a lot of bedrooms here, all of which, of course, have fireplaces. A lot of them look the same, but are just, um, you know, different colors and whatnot. So, not going to be going into every single one, but they're all pretty beautiful. Like this one has a a marble fireplace. This one kind of looks like it was perhaps a woman's room. I mean, maybe that's just bad of me to assume, but... I'd guess a daughter's room. Yeah, could be. Big room. One of the bigger rooms here. We have carpet instead of hardwood. What do you think the bed was? Mm, probably right where you're standing. <laughs> Either that or a dresser would be there. Sometimes, no, sometimes you can make out on the carpet where things were, and you could try to use your imagination to fill the room up, sure. but... I don't really, I kind of maybe see a bed outline there. I mean, look from right here. It's a perfect spot for a bed. Yeah. If only this place was furnished. Okay, so next to the carpeted room, we have a beautiful floor. Wow. That's an amazing bathroom. No mirror taken out. But that floor is insane. So shiny. Small little tub though. Looks like they were doing some work to this place. Ooh, I'm gonna say this is master bedroom. It just seems like the nicest room. You could obviously tell there used to be a light fixture or maybe even a chandelier hanging from the ceiling. Beautiful design once again. And another beautiful fireplace. Usually old mansions like this, all the fireplaces are copy and paste, but each one in here is a little bit different. We're basically settled in like the middle of a valley. So we're just surrounded by mountains, a very peaceful location. Whoa. I just opened this cabinet in the wall and check out this old high sea can. High sea orange juice. That is so old. Wow. I used to like high C a lot, but I really don't even think I see it anymore. Real fruit goodness. Vitamin C. Is there a date on this? I can't even tell. Somebody let me know what era this is, if you are familiar with how this looks. You always find the coolest little things in the nooks and crannies of houses. Like, I don't even know what this little hidden little indents would be for, but really cool find. We have uh, another bathroom, decent one. This one has the mirror, try mirror pretty cool. Whoa, that's awesome! That does not look comfortable on your back, though. That is super unique. I mean, I would touch it and look at it, but it is a toilet. That's the first. Let me put it down. Jammin' Johns. That's... That's funny. Okay, we checked out the whole second floor. Now we're gonna be going up to the third floor where Reverend Stevens, I believe, had his office. So let's go check that out. light on in here. Got a telephone. Got more of these small little rooms here. 
I bet these would be classrooms, I would assume. Which kind of give me that feeling. Creepy little rooms, though. Kind of hidden. You know. But here are some of the other rooms. We have a desk here. This is, I believe, the Reverend's office. Got a giant desk, still here. Not the prettiest desk, but a big one. And we have a nice window view with this balcony here. I could just imagine this man sitting atop here, opening these windows and just preaching essentially to all the people that may be in that field out there. Crazy times. I mean, before internet, before cell phones and cameras, I mean, the things people got away with. What a beautiful window. Love the indentation of the window here. The window is nice itself. Ooh, yes it is. some more little rooms in here this one's like kind of set up like a mini apartment has a little sink here not much of a dining room table you know good for one person I suppose That's pretty much it. Got a little bathroom over here. Got a little closet over here. With a bed stored inside. Old bed. Weird. So, we're gonna go into the basement. See if there's anything left behind. Usually, in old mansions, a lot is left behind within the basement. Got some doors, windows. Even an old molding on the ground. Let's see if we can find anything else. Wow, you can see the staircase is about to just go. Very unstable down here. Very old bones. Wow, look at this. It looks like a castle or like a catacombs with all this brickwork holding the place up. And we got power down here too. I wonder what this machine was used for. I'm not really quite sure. It's got measurements on there. The Chandler and Price Company. If anybody knows what this is, let me know. This place is so unstable here in the basement. Look at the crack right through the middle of this hallway. It's like an earthquake came through here and cracked the house. So we found this little horse stable. And uh, not really anything inside. It's really old. We left the mansion. This used to be an old road that people would take from the living quarters, that mansion. And they'd walk on this road to the bigger property in which had a chapel, rec center, food court. Because I just realized the mansion we just went into. I didn't see a kitchen. That's one thing it was miss missing. But this is where the followers would walk every day. Now, pretty overgrown. We're gonna check out some other vacant buildings on the property. Not sure if we're gonna be able to get in, but it's worth a shot. So we are approaching, it looks like two vacant houses down here as I'm slipping and sliding down this hill. Pretty rough shape. Old wooden house. The floor 
completely gave in. Oh yeah. Not left. Not much left behind now. You got that little cart right there, though. Maybe we could see him through some of the other windows. These are definitely the houses that they uh, they use for the members that sold their homes. Yeah, they were guaranteed Staging. houses. It's probably one of them. Wow, this place is really soggy. Chris, please be careful. Yeah, this place is wrecked. Accounting office. These houses are so old. You can see the foundation just completely being ripped up. I wouldn't doubt these houses were built early 1900s as well. You got a lot of beds and mattresses in there. So these are probably definitely where the um, the followers slept or stayed at least, at least some of them. The floor is completely sinking, so I'm just gonna stand in this doorway. What a crazy little piece of history just hidden away in the woods over here. The, cra the craziest part is that this cult really doesn't have that much history on it online. The only thing you could find are the lawsuits and the and the allegations made against against the guy. Look at the freaking foundation of the house. You could just walk into the basement all willy-nilly. And all it's held up with is a piece of wood over there. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it. We explored the main mansion, the big one, beautiful place, absolutely amazing architecture. This whole property is so creepy. It's so, it's beautiful, but it has such a dark and twisted history. It's just so wild that all this is still around, you know, many decades later, um, thankfully, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to see it and neither would you, but I had a great day today. Um, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you love best. I love the blue, um, that skylight, with that blue sky painting room. That one was beautiful. And the grand staircase with the green carpet. All of that was so beautiful. And this was just the cherry on top. I could even see beds just stacked up in that window over there. So they probably stockpiled so many people into these homes, so many followers, all of which kind of gave up their lives, their money, and everything just for this con artist who used religion as a, um, a way of stealing. Pretty sad, but um, I had a great day. That's gonna do it. See you guys later. Peace out, stay curious, and until next time.